All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, conversion factors. So the idea with conversion factors is you're given some unit and you want to find out what that number is uh, in a different unit. So in other words, you want to convert to the desired unit. And in the conversion factor, what we do is we multiply by the desired unit and divide by the given unit. The given units cancel out and we we'll end up with nothing but the desired unit. A couple of tips on working with conversion factors. Uh, number one, uh, conversion factors are made using two equivalent quantities. So if the quantities are not equivalent in some way, then that can't really be a conversion factor. So another tip, uh, problems may require more than one step. Uh, I can tell you right now that uh, you will, if you haven't already, you will work with conversion factors a lot in chemistry. So if you understand, if you have a solid understanding of this right now, then that will serve you well later on. So another tip, which I think is pretty important, is avoid doing them in your head. Um, you know, some people can do them in their head re really well, but I don't know. I, I like writing everything down so I can, you know, cancel out all my units and make sure that I'm left with, you know, the unit that I need. So if you can do them in your head, good for you, but I wouldn't recommend it. Another tip, anytime you're raising units to a power, you want to raise both the number and the unit associated with that number to the power. And uh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna reveal a little bit more on what this means later. Uh, one of the examples uh, that I've chosen has to do with it. And lastly, or perhaps most importantly, check your answer. Uh, intuitively, does your answer make sense? Uh, if you start out with liters and you convert to milliliters, you know, is that is that number that you end up with higher or lower? Should it be higher or lower? Think about it. If you go from liters to milliliters, you're going from a larger unit to a small unit, so your number should be higher because you have a lot more of them. So just you know, think in terms like that when you do these problems, and uh, you know maybe you might you know catch yourself doing something wrong. So let's go through some examples. Uh, we have 4.0 meters, and we want to convert that to uh, millimeters. Well, we know that 1,000 millimeters equals 1 meter, so that will help us. Those are equivalent quantities, so we can put that into a conversion factor. So we start out with what? 4.0 meters. We want to get rid of meters and end up with millimeters, so I'm going to put meters on the bottom, divide by meters to cancel them out, and we're going to multiply by millimeters, put them on top. And we said that a thousand millimeters are in one meter, so if we cancel our units out, we'll end up with nothing but millimeters. So this is 4,000 millimeters. Or 4.0 times 10 to the 3 millimeters, if we want to put it with the correct number of significant figures. Okay? So, Let's go on to uh, another one. Suppose we have 5.5 milliliters of something and we want to convert that into cubic inches. What do we do? Well, we need to know a couple of equations to start off with. We need to know, first of all, that one milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter and that 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. Those two equations are, are what are going to help us convert from 5.5 milliliters to whatever that value is in inches cubed or cubic inches. Okay, so let's set it up. We start out with 5.5 milliliters in our first con conversion factor, we're going to put milliliters on the bottom and we're going to put cubic centimeters on top. 
and we know that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. We have centimeters cubed, but we need inches cubed, so this conversion problem isn't done yet. We need to introduce a second conversion factor. Can you guess what's going to be on bottom and on top? Well, it's probably going to be cubic centimeters on the bottom and then cubic inches on top. Well, under these two equations, we don't know the definite or the uh, relationship between cubic centimeters and cubic uh, inches, but we know we know the relationship between their units when they're not cubed. We know that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch, so that's going to help us out. And this problem is what involves the uh, units raised to a power that I dis you know, was discussing a second ago. So we say that 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cube both of these values. So like I said, remember to raise both the number and the unit to the power. So we're going to cube this one inch and we're going to cube this 2.54 centimeters. So these are both cubed. Put it all into the calculator and you end up getting 0 0.34 cubic inches. All right, let's do uh, one more real quick. How about Okay. Fifteen point zero milliliters of uh, mercury, and we want to convert that into grams of mercury. Now, we need to know here that the density of mercury, which is the mass per volume of mercury, which is a constant for mercury, is thirteen point five grams per milliliter. So that means if I have one milliliter of this stuff, that milliliter is going to weigh thirteen point five grams. Okay. So we start out with our value that's given, our given unit. Fifteen point milliliter, fifteen point zero milliliters of mercury. And now I'm going to use the density as the conversion factor to convert from volume to mass. So this says that the density is 13.5 grams per milliliter, so that means that for every one milliliter of mercury, we have 13.5 grams of mercury. Milliliters of mercury cancel, and we end up with 202 grams of mercury. All right, practice those conversion factors and you should be able to take out quite a few chemistry problems on your own.